fishing man One thing you gotta understand You ain't got no other plan When you're a fishing man So take a leaf from my book From the moment you get hooked you forget how long it took When you're a fishing man Welcome back to Hooked on Tackle World. G'day, I'm Dave Buttfield. This week, I've caught up with a good friend of mine and a regular guest on the show, Peter LeBlanc. Mate, it's great to see you, bud. Great to see you too, mate. Mate, we're in beautiful pit water and it's a, a perfect day. Today, we're going out for squid. Now, something that anyone can do, you don't need a big boat, you don't need to spend a lot of money on tackle. You need a squid jig, um, a boat, all land base, and go and have some fun. That's right, and a little bit of patience sometimes, but um, you've got to have a, let's just say, you want to have fun. That's it. You know, and that's that's the thing with the squid, I find. Also, later on in the show, if we get time, we might even go for a couple of kings. Yeah, mate, there's been a bit of surface activity around. We've had kingfish, we've had sa salmon, tail, bonito all around the place, so I'm hoping that we're going to be able to feed a couple of those squid to, to some kingfish. Yeah, it, look, it's all about fun, getting out there, having a go, and uh, not spending a lot of money that we're using downriggers today. Also, we're going to make up a downrigger for the person who doesn't have a downrigger on the boat. Yeah, that's right, the poor man's downrigger. We've used them for many years, and they, they do work very well. And um, like you say, if you don't, if it's not critically important that you have it exactly at the right depth, you can use the poor man's downrigger and come up with great results. All right, we're in my little Javelin 4.3. It's a beautiful Alavan boat. There's a great uh, range of, uh, you've got your Warrior, um, you've got your Razor. Uh, they're such a great boat and custom built, so you can put every little feature you want on it. So mate, I reckon we'll get it in the gear before we drift into the wharf <laughs> and go and catch some fish. You on, Pete? Yep. Mate, you just hit the water. Yeah, it's first cast, mate. It was first cast. <laughs> and uh, it, it definitely makes a difference having some sort of polarised sunglasses on because you want to see into the water, see that weed there, and uh, and that's where the squid are hanging out. Uh, they hide in that weed, they camouflage, they wait for a little bait fish or a prawn, that's what we're using at the moment, uh, like a prawn uh, jig. This one's a dial one, has got a rattle in it, and here comes Pete's first squid. And first cast, you've done quite well, mate. I thought you were joking with me then. Just scoop him in. There you go. Whoop, there you go, little squiddly. And give him a shake. Idea that give him a bit of a shake outside the boat. And uh, I'll get that squid jig out. There you go. And uh, and there's our squid. Now this is a, a, a southern calamari. And uh, you get arrow squid through here, Pete? Yeah, we do get arrow squid out towards the mouth of pit water, uh, in the deeper water, but up in the shallows, we don't tend to get them up here. Okay, so that's a beautiful squid, beautiful size for a kingy, and it's a green eye. And when you buy a squid at the market, you want to see, especially southern calamari, you want to see that green eye. It shows that they are fresh. The rod I'm using, like I said, it's inner line. Uh, this is the end Emeraldus um, from Daiwa. Um, it's a beautiful rod. It's got this great um, soft tip, or soft bend in it, and that takes a lot of the jolt. When, so when you're getting a squid, especially when you get it by the, the end of the tentacles, if you have too uh, stiff a rod, uh, you can rip them tentacles straight off. But having that big, nice bend on it, it takes, it's a springy effect and, and it takes that jolt out. It's just nice and even pressure all the time. Um, and then I'm using the Emeraldus um, reel as well. Uh, Pete's got a, a one as well and, uh, and that's all we're using today. You don't have to use squidding rods. Uh, these are purpose built for squidding. Uh, you can use like a brim outfit or even a real light snapper outfit will still do the job. Well, we've just seen some splashing just out of where these seagulls are. We're going to go to another squidding spot. We just had a few casts there. Like I said, we just got one. And um, he said, we'll try another spot. But we just seen a little bit of splashing out where these birds are. So, And we've seen kings, so it could be tail, it could be kings mixed in with them as well. So we'll give this little stick bait a go. Beautiful. All right, well, Pete's having a cast. Oh, yep, oh, oh. On. oh good work, Pete. First cast, he's the first cast man today, mate. Mate. I went the rig up another rod, 
And Pete goes, I'll have a cast and you rig up. I say, all right, no worries, good on you. Well, and he's... <laughs> you know, 20, 20 years you try to do it, and I, I, I get it uh, when it comes on the camera. How's that? <laughs> Should have been on the camera 20 years ago. Benito, you reckon? Yeah, I reckon it's a Bonnie. Just his little, urge, uh, little urges and little kicks that he goes down. And that little stick bait um, done a great job. Like, I got a couple of hits before and just didn't hook up, and that's the way it goes. But uh, they love it. Love it. Great little lure. They do, mate. I, I love watching that the surface action, those little stick baits. They're great, great fun. How you going then, Pete? Yep, he's coming in slowly but surely, mate. He's a feisty little fella. I'll get the net ready. Yep. Coming up to you in a second. Hey, beautiful. There you go. All right, Pete, we just got that out of the net. And um, I tell you, we, look, a lot of people do eat these, and um, I've never tried one myself. But uh, I think you've eaten them, haven't you? I have, mate. Uh, light, lightly cooked on the barbecue. Yep. Just a little bit of flour. Yep. And um, cut them up into chicken nugget sizes, so it's not too overpowering. Yep. Stand around with all your bit mates and have a beer and uh, beautiful. take down the little bits of fish. Excellent. Well, there's our little stick bait. Um, that done a great job, and like I said, I had a couple of cars and had a couple of hookups, but dropped them, and uh, boat's just going past, a bit rocky. But uh, Pete, first cast, mate, and you got it on. So, mate, oh, that's a great little lure. That's the first time I've used it. Yeah, mate, you're losing that one. Yeah, yeah might have to. <laughs> Pete might be keeping it. So, all right, there's a bit more action happening behind us, so I reckon we'll get him back in the water. Off he goes. Spear Hello, buddy. And uh, we'll go and catch more fish. While you're on the web catching up with all the latest fishing info, jump across to the Hooked on Tackle World Facebook page to see what the crew are up to, including all the latest product reviews, fishing reports, photo galleries, competitions, and much, much more. That's facebook.com forward slash Hooked on Tackle World. Coming up on the show, Pete hooks a large kingfish off the surface on lure. That's after the break. Jump online and download the brand new Hooked On Fishing Mate app. It's available through iTunes for all iOS devices and also on Android. Not only does this great app show you all the weather data for a week at a time, it also has the incredible fishing log which stores all of your catch data including location, size, barometer and even moon phase of each and every fish. Then you can share your fishing logs with friends. Don't miss it, the Hooked On Fishing Mate app. There's a king chasing it, look at him. Look at them all. Oh, go, king! Come on, kings. Oh, yes, Pete. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, yes! King. Is it king? Yep. He pounced on that, you saw him? Yeah. Oh, go, go! Go! He absolutely launched on it. Oh, that's awesome, Pete. Got a follower here. Oh, yeah? Yep. Oh, that's a nice king, too, buddy. Oh, there he goes. Now he's hooked. Now he's hooked. I'll give Pete a hand in a second, but it'd uh, be good if we can get a double hook up. Oh, come on. Oh, I'll get a net, Pete. I'll get a net ready. <laughs> fish everywhere. I just can't help but cast. <laughs> Off he goes. They just don't give up. That's why I love them. My, they are my favourite fish. And he's definitely... Oh, sorry, Pete. <laughs> That's the way you get them in. Oh. All right, we'll just, uh, just got to be careful because the lure's flopping around and I'll just get rid of this one. Please just got me a rag. Um, now all we're going to do, especially we're going to get hooks out, we just cover the fish's eyes, settle him down. He's pretty settled now. Put a lot of pressure on his head, because that's the part where the lure is, so he can't move around. All right, just grab my little tape measure, something that you should have in your tackle box or on board your boat, and it's a little swivel original fish measurer. It has all the legal sizes for each state, and uh, it's designed to be in the salt water, so that's a good idea of any kind of metal. You give it a wash down with some salt away of that at the end. End of the day. All right, we've got our king. We'll measure him from tip to tail. And he is 71 centimetres, so definitely legal. And uh, 
nice, nice king. Yeah, mate. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how they just bump up amongst these moorings. And like you say, we were going over there every time we've said, let's go to another spot for a squid. We've been in and loved to buy Benito or Kingfish, so it's yeah. been good. Great. All right, uh, I'm going to get a couple of photos of him and we'll get him back in the water. Tackle World Product of the Week this week, we're talking about squid jigs. And I caught up with Louis Lengel from Tackle World Dremoyne. Hey mate, great to see you. Good to see now you, today we're having some fun on some squid, so I thought we'll talk about squid jigs, because they are a must, they should have one in your tackle box. Well that's right, don't, don't leave home without one. That's right. Now we're looking at two models here, we've got the Inca, these are exclusive to Tackle World. But the most important thing when you buy a squid jig is how it swims or how it sinks. It swims properly, yeah. When you buy your cheaper squid jigs, they tend to nose dive or they're sort or of reverse. Tail, tail yeah. In, yeah. You want a squid jig that's going to swim beautifully straight, naturally, and sink straight. That's what gets the squid. That's right, exactly right. I've seen the cheaper versions mm. and they do nose dive, they go down too quick. These go down at a really nice rate. And, and they go, like you said, they go straight down, straight perfect. Down. And yeah. that's what excites the squid. Now, the best thing about these, they come in a great range of uh, sizes from 2.5, or from twos right up to 3.5. 3 yeah. And there is a massive color selection. Now, these have got a beautiful cloth finish on them and a razor sharp barb, and they're a Japanese quality. Yeah, and they're not very expensive, 19.99 round about. So that's right. That's good value for money. It sure is. Now we're looking at the Emerellus by Daiwa. Uh, these are another great squid jig. Now a little bit different, Lou. Uh, we've got a cloth finish on the Inca squid jigs. Yep. Uh, these have got a smooth finish. Yeah, the reason for that is um, all these guys who do these new techniques, which is the violent jerk, very erratic pulling, yep. uh, being smooth and no uh, cloth, and they tend to shoot through the water with no, no restrictions. So that's a really fast working jig. Okay, uh, they've got a great range of sizes and colours as well. Because when we're in here, out near the hedge, you want to use your bigger squid jigs. When you back up, you're going down the spit or in, uh, in, in a closer waters, you want to use your smaller ones. That's so right. um, there's a great range of sizes and colours in both, and they are available in Tackle World stores. Check them out, the Inca and, and Bereldis. But if you want to find out where your local Tackle World store is, where do you go, Luke? Go to www.tackleworld.com and you'll find your local stores there. Well, this is the Tackle World product of the week, brought to you by Daiwa and Tackle World. I've just moved locations and we might as well start doing what we came here to do is catch squid. Uh, I think we've done squidding for about uh, two and a half minutes so far uh, because we've just seen fish busting up. So when you see fish hitting the surface, and I, Pete, right over there I can see fish hitting the surface again near that boat. Yep. But um, yeah, when you see fish hitting the surface, and that's why it always pays to have some lures ready. It could be a soft plastic, a little stick bait, or, or one of these uh, stick bait lures. So. Um, have it ready, see some fish, cast it into it, and as you've seen, uh, that we've had um, you know an hour of fantastic fishing, lots of fun, kings, bonito, and uh, hopefully now we can get a few squid, and, and later on in the show, uh, we'll show you how to rig them up, get them down on the downriggers, we'll make you a poor man's downrigger, and hopefully get some more kings. So, but stick around folks, we've got a lot more, lots more fishing. Um, I'm pretty excited, I'm, my adrenaline's pumping at the moment. If you're watching Hooked on Tackle World, don't go away, we'll be right back. If you're heading through the Lake Macquarie region, drop into Tackle World Marks Point, New South Wales. Best brands, best service, and the best prices around. Tackle World, there's over 50 stores throughout Australia. You're on, Pete? Yeah, mate, yeah, mate. Just pick up another one. Good work, buddy. This bait fish that keeps on running around all this weed bed, they seem to be hanging around all the bait fish here, so. Well, that's what these um, squid are feeding on. Correct? Correct. All right, well, I'm going to cast it out there. You're right there, Pete? Yeah, mate, I'll net this one. Oh, straight over the cameraman. <laughs> I missed him. I'll have to have another go. Oh, there's that black stuff. Good work, mate. Another lovely little green eye calamari. I'm on, Pete. I'm on. I'm on. Right near the surface, too. I was watching that little one you just got. 
Yeah, it's amazing how you can tease them and make it that into your advantage, take it to your advantage. Oh, this is a bigger squid. Look at this. Yes. This is the biggest one today so far, I reckon. Oh, there's a bigger one behind him, Dave. Can you keep him there for a sec? Yep, yep. You always got to outdo me, don't you? He's got it, he's got it. Yes! Woo! <laughs> Double hookups on squid. <laughs> hey, now I wasn't trying to outdo you. You, you. you were the one that attracted that one. You helped me then. <laughs> That's half mine. <laughs> it's all yours. All right. Now I was using an orange squid jig and I've changed it over to this Stiwa Emeraldus squid jig and uh, it does have an orange but it's a little bit more darker and if you can see on the back here they've got a like a um, abalone, uh, abalone shell colour um, strike hit mark it's like a it's like the prawn's been hit before it's like a wound mark to the squid so it looks like a wounded little uh, shrimp and uh, I got mine, mine in and and Pete's seen the one behind it, so, mate, they're great squid, aren't they? They are, mate. You'd, uh, if you don't, these are the ones, that, like we're saying, if you don't use them to catch kingfish, take them home and eat them. That's right, exactly. That's a great eating size. All right, mate, I reckon we can get the uh, Honda in the gear yep. and uh, go and chase some kingies. Let's go do it, eh? Let's go. So we've turned up at West Head. This is a great spot to catch bait, and where there's bait, there could be kingfish. So I've just said to Pete, we're not gonna use the downrigger now, we're gonna just use the poor man's downrigger. Um, now the way it's set up, we've got our braid, it's about 50 pound braid. Uh, we've got our snap swivel. Now this is gonna be connected to our rig, our line, our leader, and our two hooks. Okay, the way we're gonna set up our downrigger is we've got a snap swivel here, with a split ring and another snap. So you can see that. All right, we're going to connect that to our snap swivel, like so. Okay, remember we're going to have our line hanging off this one here. All right, and then we're going to put our weight. We needed some sort of weight to get our line down our bait to where the fish are. So I've got one here. Uh, this is a 400 gram one. Now we're in about 10 metres of water. Uh, we want to get it down to where the, the bait and where the fish are, around about six metres. So this one here, um, the thing is I love about using bright ones is it's attracting as well, not just the weight, as it spins around in the water, uh, this is going to flash around and puts out light and that, hopefully that's going to attract the kingfish. He's going to come over and have a look and when he comes over there's going to be a big fat squid um, not far behind it. Okay, now I'll lead her onto that and as we're trawling along there, that's going to flash around the back and uh, our bait's there. So, um, it's a great way to catch kings, and especially if you don't have a down rig, you need to get it down at the right spot. So we'll get our rigs ready, get this over, and hopefully pull in the kingfish very shortly. Pete, I just dropped that bait down and something's hit it. I hope it's a king. We've just, um, yeah, it's a king. Yeah, it's a king. <laughs> no, there must be something hard down that bottom. All right, well, there's a bit of weight there. So why I'm fighting this fish, Pete's, Pete's got the um, oh, the stick bait uh, on, and this is our poor men's downrigger. Oh, he's off. Ah, bad luck, mate. Knew that was gonna happen. I felt that, that first clunk, and um, yeah, he just pulled, 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 but uh, I'll tell you what, it's great when you put it down and bang, you get hit straight away. We weren't even ready. Hi, I'm Luke Kirkby-Clark from Honda Marine. Today I'm introducing our, uh, our new flagship engine, the BF250. It's been a long wait for the BF250, but we're finally relieved it's here, and it's uh, set in a few new records. One of the main things you're gonna notice with the BF250 is it's got uh, cold air induction, which is a Honda first, which really does help boost up the horsepower by giving it cold air direct into the motor. Inside, underneath the cow, there's a lot of technology that you're not gonna know about or see, um, which are all Honda first as well. We've got Honda VTEC, which is a system that was designed by Honda. A lot of people have tried to copy it, but we're the only one that's produced 18 million engines without one failure with VTEC. Also underneath there, we've got a few things that help with performance. We've got Blast, which is a boosted low speed torque, which basically bridges the gap between a two and four stroke. So you've got that really great hole shot that a lot of four strokes don't have. 
Now, to combat that blast, we've also got uh, lean burn technology, which basically, once the boat's on the plane and, and sailing along smoothly, it backs off the fuel usage so that you just use as little fuel as possible. Now also paired up on this BF250, we've got some other new technology which we've done in the gearbox. We've beefed up the gearbox by 10%, which has given us the option to run bigger propellers. So on this motor, we can run up to a 16-pitch propeller. Being able to do that and the wide range of propping available with this, we can match this boat, boat and motor combination from anything from a ski boat up to a heavy commercial boat. So we've got a fair few of these engines in commercial applications. Uh, Coast Guards are currently running a set of twin 250s and they're going great on a nine metre stabby. Of course, this is only one of the many brilliant Honda engines available. If you'd like to find out some more information, jump on the website, honda.com.au. To wrap up the show, Dave lands a nice kingfish using the downrigger. That's when we return after this short break on Hooked on Tackle World. This week's Catch of the Week was sent in by Adam Jenkin, who hooked and landed this 18 kilo jewfish in Newcastle Harbour. After an epic battle, the fish was released. Well done. Thanks to Salterway and Swivel's original fish measures, we'll be sending you some great products. Send your best catch to hookedtv at bigpond.com for your chance to win some great gear. Well, after being uh, busted off and getting snagged and all sorts of stuff, it only leaves us with one jig left. So um, we're going to try the downrigger as well. So we'll put uh, the poor man on one side and the downrigger on the other side. Uh, we've got a, this is a seven pound bomb. You can use up to 10 pound. And uh, we're going to just clip that on the end of it. Uh, I don't like, and Pete, uh, the one who put me onto this, um, you, do you have a, a clip that can hold the line on uh, when you're using a downrigger, but I don't like them, I like using an elastic band, so we'll use an elastic band, wrap that around um, the line, what, eight times? Yep, eight. eight times, lock it through and then clip it onto that, and then when the fish does bite it, it, it just snaps the elastic band off, so um, it works fine, and Pete's been using it for many years and it's worked for him, and that's what I do now, it's a great idea. So as you can see here, the rod's loaded up. Now, look at the top of that rod, the rod's loaded up, so what happens when the kingy does take that, instead of just having a straight rod, that rod's loaded, once it breaks, it's more pressure, it's gonna bounce back and it's gonna set the hook a lot better. So, uh, just a better way of making sure you're get getting a hook up on that kingfish. On, we're on. We're on, Pete. Mate, I don't think it's a big fish. But the funny thing with kingfish, you never can tell. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's all right now. Well, it didn't take long. We probably only had that out, what, for Pete? Three minutes? Yep, not long at all. Three or four minutes, one, one lap around it. Okay, and there we go. And there's our king. He's on that bottom hook, so. And off he goes. I'm gonna bring her up to the front of the boat. He's going to be undersized, I reckon. Look at our tape measure. And he is... 62 centimetres. The legal size for a kingfish in New South Wales is 65 centimetres. So check uh, where you're fishing, if you're in Queensland uh, or in Victoria. Um, they do get them in Queensland, don't they? But uh, it's starting to get that warmer water, so you probably won't see as many. Yeah, and also you, you tend to get them, they steer clear of them up there in the warmer water because they get that uh, mushy flesh. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right, yeah. All right, off you goes, you can go back in the water. Have a great day, mate, thanks very much. Off you goes. Well, Pete, there's our day. Not really a day, probably four and a half hours on the water in pit water. Mate, we started off great guns, got some squid, fish started busting up, got some uh, fish on the surface, got a kingfish, uh, and then uh, moved around, got more squid, and then d finished it off with uh, the downriggers. Yeah, that's right, it just goes to show you, you can run up and down in pit water in your small boats and you can have a good time, uh, as long as you cover ground and you, you use your brain a little bit and uh, just try different areas if, it's, if the first area isn't working for you. To the, you know, most people getting a couple of kings like that, we, you know, I dropped one which was illegal and uh, we got that last one which was undersized, but we still got a couple of legal kings, some bonito and some squid, that's a good feed. Exactly right, a good, great feed, and like we mentioned before, if you're not going to, if you didn't use all the squid, which we didn't, we only yep. used the heads and a few strips. That's right. Now you've got a, 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 a good feed of squid to take home as well. Calamari rings for dinner tonight, so it should be great. But look, anyone can experience the same thing and they can do 
deal with you? Have you got a charter company, Harbour and Estuary Fishing Charters? Yeah, that's right. They can contact us on www.estuaryfishingcharters.com.au and click on the contact button. Otherwise, uh, give us a call on the mobile 0410 63351 and we'll look after you and show you how to go and catch a kingfish so that you can come back and do it all on your own. That's right, Garrett Pete is a great bloke. I've been out with Pete for many years now. We always have a great time, but we always catch fish, so that's a bonus. Mate, I've got to thank you. Thank you, mate. Thanks for your time. Now, Alavan Boats, they're a great boat, a great range. Jump on the website, it's up on the screen right now, and also Honda Engines. Quiet as a mouse, and they'll save you money in fuel. I reckon I used about five bucks worth of fuel today. They're a fantastic engine. Now, if you want to find out about the gear we used on today's show, run into your local Tackle World store. There's 50 around Australia. To find yours, go to www.tackleworld.com.au. Till next week, I'm Dave Butfield with Peter LeBlanc. You can watch your Hooked on Tackle World, and I'll see you somewhere around Australia. Hooked on Tackle World is proudly brought to you by Tackle World. There's over 50 stores throughout Australia where you can hook up with a local. Daiwa, extreme performance quality fishing gear. Alavan Boats, the innovative Pro X hull design gives extreme performance throughout the range. And Honda Marine, world renowned Honda four stroke technology and a five year warranty on all Honda engines in the lineup. And don't forget to grab the latest edition of Photo Fish Magazine. It's out now.